All right, I just wanted to take a moment to um, introduce myself. My name is Amy Wolf. I'm the program coordinator for the Osterville Village Library. Thank you so much for coming out today. And to our friends on Zoom, thank you so much for joining us as well. We are very excited to have Anka Rudy here once again. We love her um, with the power of plants. She has definitely opened some eyes mm -hmm. to plant-based nutrition. Um, so without further ado, Anka Rudy with meal uh, prep planning, meal prep and planning. Yes. Well, hello everybody. Um, please help yourselves to some uh, food. Today I have brought the ever popular baked beans, which is a recipe from my friend Jean Schumacher, who, um, by the way, runs um, something called the Plant-Based Academy. So if you are interested in taking this further and really doing a kind of a deep dive into the whole plant-based nutrition thing, um, and if you want support along the way, Jean offers something. Uh, she does Zoom calls twice a week. She has a website with masses of resources and information. So I've left a flyer over there if you're interested. Um, and uh, she used to do talks here, and she's now doing talks at some of the some of the other libraries. So the beans are. Um, I left some recipe, some copies of the recipe out. The beans are. Um, I use black beans, lots of onion and garlic and spices. There is turmeric, black pepper, uh, apple cider vinegar, Dijon mustard, molasses, smoked paprika, and the magic ingredient is this condiment called liquid smoke. So you can buy this in all the major supermarkets completely natural and it just gives the uh, beans this lovely kind of smoky flavor so it's great in the summer with your veggie burgers and uh, so that's a, it's a really easy recipe you throw it all in one pot and it just it just cooks all by itself and that's the kind of recipe I like you can use an instant pot or I just have a crock pot I actually cook these on the stove and the flavors just um, blend really nicely so I made them last night and then the flavors kind of come through even stronger the next day. So it's a it's a good one. It's popular. My husband loves it. I love it. We can eat it. We actually do eat it most weeks. I make a big pot of it on the Sundays and then we have it kind of for the week. So do we have any I'm seeing a couple of new faces. Is it anyone's first time at these talks? Okay. Well welcome and thank you for coming. Um are you plant-based or are you just interested in learning more about it? Interesting. Okay, great. Um, so I thought I would just, the last two weeks ago, the last talk, we had a lot of new people and I kind of did a little introduction um, just for the benefit of those who had missed my original talk back in October, I think it was. So if you don't mind, we're just going to go through some kind of basics um, before we kind of get more into the meal planning and prepping side of things. Okay. So um, one thing I just like to kind of remind people of is that, you know, we are in this country and not just here, but in a lot of Western countries, we're having a major health crisis where the cost of healthcare is just going up and up and up and chronic disease is going up and up and up. And it's just been this way since the fifties. And um, we're just getting sicker and sicker, but at the same time, we're spending more and more money. So there's something wrong. And um, a lot of the problems, unfortunately, um, a lot of the problems we have can be traced back to lifestyle and primarily food. And one of the problems is that uh, there's so much misinformation out there and there's so much, you know, all the advertising, the food industry, like, you know, trying to get us to eat all this junk food and we all know it's bad for us, but it's addictive. And anyway, so what can we do about it? There's actually a lot you can do to improve your own health. And it's, it's not as complicated as, you know, um, some people would have us believe and it all sounds quite basic once we think about it. So we all know the processed foods with lots of additives is, is bad for us. Okay, so what um, whole food plants, plant based is, is really going back to natural foods as, as little processed food as possible. So lots of fruit and vegetable, um, but lots of grains, you know, brown rice, whole wheat, um, nuts and seeds and legumes, like beans, chickpeas, lentils, those are all fabulous for your health. Um, a large variety, you probably heard the phrase eat the rainbow. So, you know, the more colorful the foods you eat, the more phytonutrients and vitamins and minerals they contain, antioxidants, micronutrients, all those things. So variety is really important. 
and um, a fiber is very important, and we'll get to that in a minute. So um, I like to always just remind people the difference between whole food plant-based and vegan, and you'll hear the word vegan thrown around a lot, and also plant-based foods, um, and whole food plant-based is kind of different. I mean, everything we eat is technically vegan, but we don't eat the processed vegan foods. So um, vegan is really more of a kind of an ethical choice. It's about not eating any animal products, which you know includes you know not wearing leather and all those things. And a lot of young people are vegan more for the kind of you know ethical and um, moral, you know the animal uh, welfare side of things. But whole food plant based um, diet and lifestyle is really more about eating for human health and nourishing your body with foods that are really going to help prevent disease, help reverse disease, help heal from disease. It's a very, very powerful diet once you start cutting out the um, carcinogens, you know, from dairy and all the, the, the dangerous things in, in, in meat that are so bad for our bodies that cause heart disease and you know, cholesterol and all those things. So um, it's really just going back to natural foods, as little processed as possible, and really tons of um, starch, carbs, you know, it's, um, it's nice to kind of hear the word, you know, <clears throat> carbs in, in a positive connotation, because we've all been told that low carb is the way forward, but complex carbs, you know, in the forms of potatoes, sweet potatoes, grains, fruit and veg, I mean, 80% of our fuel should be coming from carbohydrates, because <clears throat> that's really the fuel that human bodies need. We need glucose. For our brains, protein doesn't give you energy. Protein is really just for muscle regeneration. We don't need nearly as much protein as we've been told we do. And the protein that we do need, we can get from plants in a cholesterol-free, you know, low-fat way that is much, much more beneficial for our bodies, for our gut biome, all of that. So that's kind of what I've been talking about in previous talks. This is kind of just the background. Um, holistic nutrition, that's just kind of, a, again, a list of all the things that we do eat. So instead of saying, oh, we don't eat meat, we don't eat dairy, we don't eat fish, the only things we do eat and the variety of you know plants that we can eat is huge and and all packed with you know vitamins and minerals and fiber and all those good things. So I'll just kind of go through these quickly. This is if you've watched any of the documentaries like Forks Over Knives, um, you might have seen Dr. Greger, he pops up all the time. He's written this Fantastic book, which I always recommend to people as a kind of first dip into if you want to read and learn more about the science and the evidence and the research behind this way of eating. I really recommend this book, How Not to Die. And of course, it's kind of a bit of a, you know, it's a it's a eye-grabbing cover, but it's how not to die from preventable lifestyle diseases. Um, and this is really excellent. I've read it a few times, got lots of notes in it. Um, tons of references in the back, um, but I found it very palatable. You know, you don't have to be a science nerd to understand it, and I thought that was excellent. Um, and he has this uh, list called The Daily Dozen, and this is a great guideline. I have one of my good friends has now actually stuck this to her pantry. So he recommends, you know, this is the variety that he kind of suggests every day, beans, fruits, greens, blacks, seed gets its own number on the on the dozen uh, berries, cruciferous vegetables, nuts, spices, beverages, and exercise. That's one of the 12 as well. So he's just, a, he's a great, I mean, a guru. I will call him a guru. One of the kind of leading top based experts out there. And um, he also founded a website called nutritionfacts.org, which has got all the latest research, evidence-based, uh, research-driven <clears throat> nutritional facts, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so anything you're interested in, whether it's, you know, coffee or, you know, uh, soy or anything, he's got, you can all look it all up alphabetically, tons and tons of great little videos and articles on nutritionfacts.org. So he's a great resource. Um, and some of these quotes, you know, eating the rainbow, variety, plant pigments, antioxidants, anti-aging, anti-cancer, it's all good. Um, and one of the things he sort of reminds us is that you don't have to worry too much about you know, getting every single nutrient in every day. It's really all about kind of what you're eating over the course of the week, the month, the year. It all just kind of accumulates. He's also quite um, lenient in the sense that, you know, he says you don't have to do it 100%. You know, even if you're doing sort of 80% plant-based and whole foods, you can have the occasional, well, a treat, but I mean, understanding that maybe that's not being as uh, beneficial to your health as as the way of, of eating that he's recommending. But um 
That's a great book to start with. You can get it from the library. And you will see him in the uh, in the documentaries. That's his Daily Dozen. That's the website. And he just came out with a new book called Better Age. And he also has another one called How Not to Diet. And then he has cookbooks to go with him as well. So he's, he's great. Um, this is just a nice picture of some nice colorful vegetables and fruits. <clears throat> Okay, so um, just quickly again, just dipping into this sort of uh, the protein myth, we don't need as much protein as we need. Actually, if you're eating enough calories today, if you're on like say an average 2000 calorie diet, as long as you're eating enough calories, you are getting enough protein from all the different sources, it's, um, including on a plant-based diet, from the beans and the grains, and you know, even broccoli has uh, protein in it. So don't worry about the protein. Um, dairy is a is a big one. Um, there's a lot of research into the um, sort of cancer tumor causing properties of casein, which is the protein in dairy. Um, there's a great book called The China Study by Dr. Colin Campbell that goes into that in a lot of detail. Um, calcium, it's kind of a myth that we have to drink milk to get calcium because actually um, calcium is so acidic that it actually leaches calcium from our bones. And the countries with the highest consumption of dairy products also have the highest uh, you know, numbers of osteoporosis. So that's a myth. Um, you can get calcium from plants. And also, just as I mentioned before, carbs, providing you're um, eating the complex carbs, potatoes, fruit, veg, that is what our body needs for, for fuel every day. Okay, so here are just some plant-based protein sources, lots of nuts and seeds and beans and peas. Um, tahini, that's sesame seeds, <clears throat> flax seeds. If you're going to um, you know, please try and add flax seeds into your daily routine, either in granola or in a stew or something, please make sure you grind them because um, if you if you just eat the whole flax seed, it doesn't release all the nutrients. So these are whole ones. So you need to kind of grind those up. You can just buy flax seed already ground up, which is what I do because I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> But someone actually stopped me in the supermarket once and told me that it's much better to get the whole black seeds and grind them up. So if you have time to do that, great. So here's some um, plant-based protein sources, no cholesterol. There is some good healthy fat in the nuts and seeds, but we do need our healthy fats every day. So just um, with the nuts, just limit how many you eat every day because they are, if you're watching your weight, if you're trying to put on weight, go for it. But if you're trying to watch your weight, don't overdo it on the nuts because they they have got a lot of, um, it's very, they're very nutri nutritionally dense. Okay, and then another question that people often ask um, people who eat this way is where are you getting all your, are you getting enough, you know, calcium, magnesium, potassium, all those things. So um, we try to avoid taking supplements other than B12, because that is something that is not present in, <coughs> in, uh, in the soil anymore. We used to get it from the soil, um, things grown in soil that due to, um, just over farming and pesticides, there's very little B12 left. So uh, everyone should actually be supplementing B12. It's a very important one. And also D in the in the winter when we're not getting any sunshine because D is actually a hormone that only comes from the sun. So um, B12 and D in the winter months. Everything else, it's really preferential to get it from a natural source because it can be very detrimental actually to take too much vitamin C and all these supplements that you know it's a huge industry i mean billions of dollars i think it's 60 billion dollar industry or something the supplement industry it's actually bad for you to take too much of things and also in a synthetic form that's not kind of a, um, a natural way for your body to take that it's, it's just you can but all these you know books i mean i didn't bring all the books today but a lot of the books um like how not to die and also whole and um, the china study they, they explain why it's bad to take just too much isolated um, vitamins and minerals like that and it's much better to take it in its natural form and it has the fiber and all the phytonutrients and it's all in the right kind of balance and it's a much better way for your body to process it if it's in its natural form. Um, fiber is kind of, someone else mentioned also, I read it somewhere, it's almost like, it's like plants bones, you know, it's what holds the plants up, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's only found in plants um, and it is really important for pretty much the functioning of everything in our bodies because it's it's what makes the um, gut biome happy. And the gut biome is very important for um, so many different reasons. I mean, 
there's so much new research on the gut biome and um, that is what the gut wants is fiber and, and no animal products have any fiber in them whatsoever and, and over 95% of Americans are not getting enough fiber on a daily basis and it causes all sorts of problems. Won't get too graphic. Okay, so this is another one of my favorite um, experts in the field. This is Colin Campbell, who wrote the China study. Uh, he's kind of the grandfather of the movement. He's amazing. Lots of great quotes from him. Um, that top quote is kind of cut off a good diet. The diet is the most powerful weapon we have against disease and sickness. Um, there's actually a movie that was shown at the senior center recently. Kathy, I think you said you went to see. It's called uh, Disease Reverse disease reversal and hope or something. Anyway, it's a very powerful um, tool, weapon that we have against disease in terms of prevention, but also reversing and healing. I mean, it's it's amazing. I, I showed that movie here in December. Um, it's really, it's incredible. It can reverse type two diabetes, um, cholesterol, your cholesterol will go down. It can reduce uh, blood pressure. So there's just so many benefits eating this way. And, and even if you don't want to do it 100%, just adding more fiber and plants, you know, fruits and vegetables and whole grains into your diet will be very, very beneficial. Um, so this is, he, he pops up in all the um, documentaries as well. He's, he's a great one to follow. All right, so here are just some plant-based calcium sources. Again, lots of nuts and seeds and beans, but also broccoli, uh, arugula, you know, so lots of the leafy greens have calcium. Tofu is a good one. Chickpeas, sweet potato, sweet potatoes has tons of wonderful minerals in it. Quinoa, uh, <coughs> almonds. And I just found these. So, you know, I was just Googling, you know, yesterday for these slides, you know, you just go into, um, go, just go to Google and just type in um, plant-based calcium sources and these lovely charts pop up. So there's tons of information out there. If you think, well, you know, I'm, I think my magnesium is a bit low. Where can I get my magnesium? Just um, yeah. Google it. And there's always a plant-based source out there for you. So this is foods high in potassium. Funnily enough, bananas are not top of the list. So that was another thing I didn't know. I thought, you know, bananas are always touted as the, the best source of potassium. I mean, obviously they're very convenient because it's a great snack to carry around with you. It's in nature's packaging. Um, and they've got tons of great carbs and, you know, that's great fuel for athletes. You know, you see athletes kind of eating in the middle of a tennis match and whatnot. So bananas are great, but um, also spinach, avocado, okay, ignore the tuna, um, <laughs> pumpkin seeds, oranges have potassium in them, who knew? Anyway, so lots of good plant-based sources. Iron, that's another one. And iron is an interesting one because the iron that we get from animal protein is like the heme iron. It actually has a lot of bad negative um, consequences, whereas the iron sources from plants are, um, it's a, it's a, I don't like to use the word clean, but cleaner sources, you know, non-detrimental sources of iron. So um, lentils are fantastic. Uh, tofu, all the beans and peas are all great sources of iron. Pumpkin. All right, so we'll just keep moving through the magnesium, which I know some of my friends take magnesium supplements because they've been told it's going to help them sleep better. So instead of taking a magnesium pill, um, just try and incorporate some of these foods into your daily diet because it will be a much healthier way for you to get the magnesium and then a much healthier way for your body to process um, that mineral. All right. <clears throat> Oh, and this, I, I, Jean, another one, my, the Plant Based Academy lady, she just posted this yesterday and I thought this was amazing. So these are just to give you an idea of the variety. And I mean, I eat kale and spinach and arugula, but um, every now and then I'll grab a leafy green that I haven't had before, like a covered green, bless you. Um, asparagus, you know, when it's in season. I mean, oh, broccoli is a big one. Um, eat that, you know, four times, five times a week. So yeah, there's just a wonderful variety of greens and there's so many different ways you can prepare them. You can eat them in salads, you can throw them into a stew. I mean, very often if I'm making a bean stew of some kind, I'll throw some kale into all the end just to get some extra greens in. So basically you find the ones you like, um, maybe experiment a little bit, you know, try some new ones and just always try to eat what's in season or whatever looks good at the grocery store, whatever you like. I mean, whatever you enjoy and I'm going to eat the most of. So greens, 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 very, very, very good for you. Very important, especially in this um, 
this way of eating, they're kind of the, the star players. Okay, back to fiber. We already talked about fiber. Um, very, very important for a healthy gut biome. The biome has been called the second brain because it's so essential to the functioning of your body. I mean, it affects your immune system and just so many different functions of the body. I mean, the body is just an amazingly miraculous machine. And, you know, I forget how many trillions or billions or whatever of, of bacteria we have in our gut, but it's it's pretty mind-blowing. And it's um, it's important to keep your gut healthy and happy. So um, eating more plants and whole grains is going to do that for you. All right, here's just another little chart that I found. So this is kind of the, gives you an idea of sort of the, the quantities. I mean, I never measure really um, what, how much I'm eating but um, of each thing, but generally, you know, the whole grains, the beans, all of that in the bottom, whole grains, brown rice, whole wheat bread, all kinds of pasta. Um, I mean, I eat whole wheat, I eat lentil pasta, quinoa pasta, chickpea pasta. Um, for the gluten-free people, there's so many great options out there now. Um, but just whole wheat pasta is great. Um, and then lots of fruit and veg. And then calcium-rich foods, um, nuts, seeds, soy, leafy greens. Um, and then, so the omega-3 fatty acids, we can get those from flax seeds. Um, no need to eat salmon for those. Um, Protein-rich foods, that's your tofus and beans. Um, tempeh, I don't know if any of you have ever cooked with tempeh. It's another soy product out there. Anyway, so that just gives you an idea of kind of our food period, that pyramid. Me, okay, so now we're gonna talk, so today's talk is supposed to be about meal prep. Okay, so a lot of people say, well, I don't really know how to do it. I don't want to cook all this stuff every day. So there are ways to kind of make it easier for you. So what I like to do um, when you have like a quiet afternoon or a afternoon or whenever fits into your schedule, you just cook a batch of rice. So I cooked a big batch of brown rice or you could cook, cook uh, quinoa or farro or kind of a grain of some kind as a, as a kind of a base. And then I will also make a big pot of some kind of bean or legume stew. I make a chickpea stew um, with lots of onions and, and garlic and turmeric and cumin and things. So whatever you like, and it can be something different every week or, or a vegetable chili, lots of beans and vegetables and, and sweet potatoes, millions of recipes out there. So you have your grain, you have your legume for your nice plant protein, and then um, you can also roast a big tray of vegetables, and that will keep for a few days. You know, you put it in little containers in the fridge. I mean, some people like to, if you're going to work every day and you need to bring a packed lunch, some people like to actually get the little containers of, you know, portion it all out. I don't do that because I like to eat a little differently every day, but um, some people like to do that, and it's, it works for them. Um, I make a big batch of uh, granola every week. Anyway, so here's um, a list of kind of pantry staples. And I brought a few to show you. Today. So um, different grains. There's some really interesting. Is everyone familiar with the Bob's Red Mill brand? Um, they have it at, they have definitely a Whole Foods. They have it um Stop and Shop. I've seen it. And also Job Lock. They have a huge, huge selection of Bob's Red Mill. So you can find all sorts of different grains. Um, I tried lots of different ones. This is um, kamut. It's from ancient Egypt. It's an ancient Egyptian grain. Okay. There's something called amaranth. This is, um, I believe, a Mexican. Yeah, traditional grain of Mexico. The staple food of the ancient Aztecs. Okay. Um, wheat bran. This is, uh, bless you, quinoa. Um, but you could just cook brown rice. Oh, farro! I have a bag of farro. This this is actually the the grain of ancient Rome. And if you've watched, who's seen the documentary The Game Changers? Have any of you seen it? Okay, so, okay. Watch this, please. Watch this documentary. It's on Netflix. And they talk about the gladiators um, in ancient Rome, and they've done um, they've done some D DNA, you know, some testing on the bones. They've dug up some gladiator graves and they have established that the gladiators were vegetarian because they were slaves basically you know thrown into the arena you know to fight to the death and they were basically um fed on barley and grains and beans and things so they they were actually nicknamed the um the barley munchers 
that's one translation. Anyway, so um, the myth that you have to have meat protein to get big and strong, that has been debunked over and over again. And you can build muscle and strength eating plant-based as the gladiators prove. Okay, so you're gonna make a nice big pot of um, some kind of grain and then uh, lots of different kinds of beans and lentils and legumes. This is actually, you can buy packs of, this is a 16 bean soup. And you can just cook that up. It has little green peas in it as well. So find some beans that you like. Lentils are really good for you. And this is a pasta, a brown rice and quinoa pasta from Trader Joe's. They also have a lentil and brown rice pasta, which is my favorite. Um, so you can just prepare, you know, cook for the week. Um, and these are just things that I like to keep in my pantry. So oats are a great one for breakfast. Um, really wonderful um, source of energy. They keep you full. They've got lots of fiber. Um, so nuts and seeds, all those different seeds. Um, the spices are very important just to give food flavor because we we the a whole food plant base. A lot of the people eating this way try to cut out salt as well. Um, so we cook with, you know, lots of um, cumin and chili and turmeric and all those wonderful spices. Herbs, fresh or dried. Um, hot sauces. Most hot sauces are vegan. Thank goodness, got a lot of hot sauce. Um, vegetable stock, and you can just get the little cubes. They're hard to find in the supermarkets here. I get them in Market Basket because I cannot always find the vegetable stock cubes. They always have chicken and beef, but the vegetable stock cubes are hard to find. Or you can just buy it already in liquid form in the, in the boxes at Trader Joe's or wherever you shop. <laughs> um, so for sweeteners, because we try to cut out processed sugars, for sweeteners, we're using um, date syrup, maple syrup, and molasses. So for baking, uh, molasses has that lovely, rich, kind of smoky flavor. I love it. You can make molasses cookies. Really delicious. The date syrup, I put on my cereal. I put it um, on pancakes with maple syrup, um, dried fruits, and then, of course, fresh fruit and veg in the fridge and freezer. Um, you can stock up, you know, whenever stuff goes on sale. So frozen fruit and veg is every bit as good for you as fresh. You know, so sometimes actually even better, someone was telling me recently, because the fresh stuff has been on the shelves or in transit for so long, sometimes it's healthier to eat um, frozen and fruit and veggies. It's frozen when it's fresh. So. But anyway, just something to consider, especially, um, you know, if you're watching budget, I mean, a lot of the frozen veg is extremely reasonable to buy. Okay, so this is one of my, had one of my kind of cupboards at home. So, um, I'm going to label all my stuff. That on the bottom left is nutritional yeast. Have any of you used nutritional yeast in cooking? So that's a, it's a plant-based um, thing. I mean, it's it's a little odd, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, someone recently referred to it as a, it has a texture of fish food, which is really unappealing, but it's kind of flaky and yellow and it has a kind of a slightly cheesy, nutty flavor to it. So, you know, I mix that into sauces. You can sprinkle it on your popcorn. You can, I mean, popcorn is whole food plant-based as long as you don't, you know, slather butter all over it. So popcorn is considered a whole food. Um, I mix it into a stroganoff sauce that I make and throw it into stews and it contains B12. That's one of the reasons, you know, it's such a kind of uh, beloved food, also referred to as nooch. Um, and above that, that is hemp seeds, which, you know, you can throw into smoothies, you can throw on your granola, on your cereal, into a stew. Hemp has a lot of wonderful nutritional benefits. Um, I think that's some dried apricots and cranberries, almonds, chia seeds, sesame seeds, coconut, uh, which I've kind of stopped using in my granola because it is actually saturated fat. Unfortunately, it's the only plant food that has saturated fat in it. So I'm kind of cutting back on the coconut, but it, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's not terrible, but definitely if you're watching your um, fat intake um, with nuts and coconuts, it can definitely start creeping up. And then um, we have some pumpkin seeds, cinnamon, cocoa powder, and those are some dark chocolate covered cherries, which are kind of my occasional tree. But the, my favorite um, dessert is actually dates. I think I've got a picture of them coming up. Anyway, so yeah, so here are these are all the things that I brought in today, all the different grains and beans. Okay, and then condiments, you know, lime juice, soy sauce, 
Coconut aminos are an alternative to soy sauce. They're gluten-free. Um, balsamic glaze, um, apple cider vinegar, lots of different vinegars. So I've switched from putting oil on my salad to just putting balsamic vinegar on it and lime juice. So I'm kind of cutting out the oil when I cook at home. Um, some more spices, there's a liquid smoke, zatar is a Middle Eastern spice. Has anyone come across zatar? I think they have it at Trader Joe's, but I bought a big bag of it at a uh, Middle Eastern shop. It's just a blend of different herbs and kind of Mediterranean herbs and sesame seed. It's very kind of, it's delicious. If you come across it, Zatar, Z-A-T-A-R, uh, cumin, um, and then yeah, my spice drawer, I just kind of cleaned that up a little bit the other day, kind of consolidated because I had so many different varieties of cinnamon and turmeric and everything. But um, Spices and condiments are your are your friends. They're gonna add so much flavor to your food. So this is what I was talking about just now, like cooking batches of rice, quinoa, farro, pot of legumes, roast vegetables. You can also kind of chop some salad vegetables, you know, like chop your cucumbers, chop your tomatoes, because then when it's lunchtime, you're really hungry. It'll be really easy to put a salad together. You're just gonna have everything ready to go. Um, I don't bake my own bread, but I have a lot of friends who do, and that's another great thing to do on a quiet afternoon when you have time. Sourdough bread is really good for you. And if you're buying bread, just, just look at the ingredients and make sure there aren't 100 ingredients, because even the whole wheat bread, sometimes you turn it over and it's got all sorts of additives that you don't really want to be eating. So look for a bread, a whole wheat bread with as few ingredients as possible, or make your own. I have a friend who makes sourdough, and sometimes I get a loaf so that's nice okay so here's some uh, brown rice this is a vegetable chili with sweet potato and this is a chickpea stew this looks very similar to one i make and uh, that i throw kale into chickpeas and lemon um i put lemon rind in my chickpea stew it's to die for it's so delicious i'll bring it next time um, so yeah there's just a lot a lot a lot of wonderful recipes out there and there's easy ways to just pack a ton of great nutrients into a really easy dish like one pot dish like a stew or a chili um which you know you've probably eaten chilies before so instead of turkey or whatever you throw in some quinoa and some sweet potato and you'll be surprised at how the flavor actually comes from the spices and i mean i don't miss meat i've been doing this for four years i don't miss the meat at all um because i'm eating so many delicious foods loaded with flavor and it's all good for me so i just I've been enjoying, you know, sort of experimenting with new recipes and new flavors. Um, this is granola. This is not, I got this from the internet, but mine looks quite similar. I think that's coconut. So I do mine without coconut, but you can add um, yeah, any nuts you want. I add, um, basically, so I start with oats. You just pour the oats on the tray and then I add chia seeds, hemp seeds, um, some pumpkin seeds, any seeds you want, any nuts you want. You can add some cranberries or raisins. And then I just drizzle a little maple syrup over it and I put it in the oven and it just crunches up. And that's that's my breakfast with a little oat milk and some fresh fruit. That's one of my favorite things to eat for breakfast. And it's very filling. You can also make overnight oats. Some people like to make overnight oats in little jars with chia seeds, which kind of gets gelatinous. And my dad makes this every night. He does, he has all these different seeds and growing you know, and oat on top of the oats. Um, and then you pour the milk on it and it sits in the fridge overnight and then it gets soft by the morning. Now, I don't like my um, oats kind of mushy. I like the crunch, but each each to his and her own. You do whatever, whatever tastes good to you. And there are, I mean, thousands of recipes. If you go to, do any of you use the website Pinterest? Mm -hmm. It's fantastic for recipes. You can just type in, you know, overnight oats and we'll get thousands of recipes and you can just pick the one that you like the look of. Um, okay, so this is some really, really um, beautiful meal prep, not mine. I hasten to add, so this is what other people are doing. Um, but, you know, like whole wheat noodles, um, the chickpeas, that looks like a nice, like a peanut sauce. And this, I'm going to look like an Asian... Um, some tofu, red cabbage, some noodles, edamame and carrots. So you can meal prep like this and have your meals ready to go every day. I mean, that's really impressive. 
Um, a lot of people are now making salads in jars. That's another idea. So, you know, there are a million ideas. If you um, just if you just type in plant-based meal prep, all this stuff just pops up and you can just really have fun with it and see what you like the look of, you know, and what looks tasty to you. Um, and tons of great um, um, recipes for salad dressings and marinades and all sorts of things. There are books, you know, you can get about meal prep. I, I will check to see what the libraries, what the what Clams um, Network has in terms of plant-based meal prep books. But I mean, the internet is really your friend. You can just type in anything you want, you know, any recipe, you'll get a thousand different uh, versions. And then, you know, even like a pasta with a, um, with a tomato sauce, this looks like some kind of uh, curry. There's a, um, that looks like oatmeal and chia seed with lots of fruits and bananas, which are amazing. That looks like maybe a little bit of almond butter on the top. Um, spinach salad with chickpeas and quinoa or something. Anyway, so million different combinations of delicious salads and grains and oats and breakfast ideas. Mm -hmm. This is a tray of roasted vegetables. I think that's some kind of, like, actually that could be beets on the right. Don't look like beets, looks like beets. But you could do, you know, sweet potato. You can do, there's an amazing purple potatoes. They're supposed to be really good for you. They're hard to find. Um, cauliflower, broccoli, regular potatoes. So whatever your favorite vegetables are, I love fennel. Um, you can put tomatoes on anything. You can just make a huge tray of vegetables. And I um, I don't put oil on mine. You can use oil if you're still eating oil. Um, but lots of seasoning, you know, cumin, chili, turmeric, um, and a little drizzle of vegetable stock. And mine crisp up just fine without the oil. Um, so that's veggie, roasted veggies. And, you know, roasted veggies are great. Um, you can throw them on top of the salad. You can mix them with some pasta sauce. Or you can just eat them on their own as a side. I mean, either I just start eating mine as soon as they come out of the oven, just as a snack. Okay, so what are the benefits and do you have to try to go completely whole, whole food plant based overnight? Well, no, you don't. You can start gradually, especially if you're not used to eating a lot of fiber. You can just introduce, you know, more plants, a little bit more every day. Try just switching out a few of the meat-based uh, meals with a veg vegetarian version. Just try, um, yeah, making a few changes. If you're still drinking um, cow's milk, you can switch to any of the plant milks offered. There's a huge variety, but again, just try and read the label because a lot of them have added sugars and gums. And there are a few brands you'll find that have just the nut and the water. Like some of the Trader Joe's um, long life ones in the aisle with the, um, like the shampoo is in that one, down that aisle they have um, very few ingredients. So just try to get the unsweetened ones. Um, so that's a good place to start. And just, just start experimenting with some plant-based recipes and try and do a vegetable chili or, you know, just have a sweet potato loaded with, you know, beans and a nice salad on the side. That's a great meal. Um, so yes, you will, I mean, <clears throat> you will see a lot of changes. If you've been eating the standard, what we call the standard American diet, also known as SAD, um, and you switch to plant-based diet, you will notice a lot of good benefits. You know, you'll probably start uh, sleeping better. You'll have more energy. Your skin will will look good. Um, if you're, you know, if you're eating a lot more fiber, you'll probably find that you're eating smaller amounts of the food because it'll fill you up, and you can't eat tons and tons of it because you just feel full. You know. And, um, <clears throat> So you might see some weight loss, um, your cholesterol will go way down um, because all of this food is cholesterol free. You're only, you're only getting cholesterol from um, products. Um, your blood pressure will probably go down. So there are a lot of great benefits um, across the board. Um, and you'll just feel, I think you'll feel a lot better. Um, so there is a lot that you can find I mean, online. There's tons of great books. Um, there are some wonderful documentaries to watch if you're interested in learning more. Um, Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen is a great guideline just to kind of remind you, you know, what, to, what you should be eating every day. Um, but if you get your blood work checked, that's kind of your report card. So that's really going to tell you. So, you know, a lot of the fad diets here in the West are all about weight loss because, you know, I mean, it's it's 
generally recommended to be in a kind of a, a BMI, you know, to have a sort of a healthy BMI, so you're not, you know, too um, skinny or not too heavy, just for your for your blood pressure and you know just general health. But weight loss, um, you know, if you're doing it in an unhealthy way, it's not it's not good for you, and also it's not sustainable. Um, so you know, just being just losing fifty pounds is not necessarily a good thing, depending on how you've done it and whether you're going to keep it off. So um, this way of eating is really more about your blood work because um, that will actually show you, you know, all your the numbers like the cholesterol, the you know, and your blood pressure. So um, blood work is really important, and you will see massive changes. So there's a, a movie that shows. Um, how they reverse type two diabetes and a number of people is called from food to freedom and it can actually eating this way can actually reverse a lot of lifestyle diseases and can prevent you know a heart a lot I mean a, a vast percentage of you know heart disease and a lot of a lot of um, chronic diseases can be traced back to food and lifestyle so um, it's a really powerful way to eat. It's it's super beneficial, and it's not just benefiting you; it's also benefiting the environment because um, a lot of um, well, it's the methane and all the other. I mean, the, the the deforestation, a lot of deforestation happening, especially in the Amazon, is to make way for cattle and and also for land to grow the feed for the cattle. I mean, there are some really kind of shocking statistics, but. Um, and also just the overfishing of the oceans and like the fish farming. I actually just watched a documentary last night recommended by Jean of Plant Based Academy, and it's called um, Eating Ourselves. I think it's called Eating Ourselves to Extinction. Um, and I watched the 35 minute, um, the short version, which you can find on YouTube. And it's it's very powerful and it's kind of shocking. And a lot of it, you know, you know, about the deforestation and the overfishing, but um, it's it's really well presented and it's powerful and it also, basically comes to the conclusion that we cannot keep eating the way we're eating. Uh, it's not sustainable for 8 billion people, just with the amount of land and water uh, resources that um, animal agriculture is using. It's just not sustainable. So the message is basically that we should all be trying at least to cut, cut down on how much meat and fish and dairy we're consuming because it's, it's really damaging the planet in a big way. So that's a good one as for eating, eating ourselves to extinction. Um, but another few good documentaries to watch are Forks Over Knives. They make a magazine. They have a great website. Um, Game Changers, which is on Netflix, is really interesting. Um, for um, well, it, it, it focuses on vegan athletes and where they're getting their um, energy and protein and you know their performance levels shooting up and all that. So um, that's a really interesting one. That was made by James Cameron. And it features um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, so that's entertaining. That's a great one to watch um, with young people as well, because it's all about you know athletes and you know it's it's powerful. Um, so there are a lot of really great documentaries. What else do we have here? Oh, okay. So this is just um, a graphic showing you know what a whole food plant based plate might look like. So you've got think, sweet potatoes, quinoa, black beans, and then a big pile of leafy greens and some berries. So again, just to give you kind of a visual, this is Forks Over Knives, that they're wonderful. They, I think the movie came out over 20 years ago. Okay, so there, here's some of my food. So on the left, this is what I had for dinner last night. Um, that's uh, like a couple of sweet potatoes with a little bit of plant-based um, yogurt and hot sauce. And then the other one, I have some hummus. And then some kale, a little bit of leftover chickpea Greek salad that I made for Easter some broccoli and some black beans. So that actually, I kept adding more and more. <laughs> it was supposed to be just sweet potatoes and a little chickpea salad, but I kept adding more and more stuff to it. So I'd made some broccoli for my daughter and then I thought I should have some leafy greens. So I threw some kale on there. So I just kind of built my plate, you know, and I was very full after that. That was actually a, a, quite a big dinner for me, but um, it's a very easy to just, you know, to, to get a really satisfying tasty meal from some, just some simple foods. Oh, and the middle is, I try to, I'm not a very good baker, so I tried to make this, um, the, the friends who had us over for Easter were doing kind of a Greek theme. So I looked up Greek uh, vegan dessert and, they, and this walnut cake showed up and what I made turned into more like bread because I omitted the oil and I didn't put as much sugar in it. But it's tasty, it has orange rind in it and some date syrup and cinnamon. 
So I just, it was a bit dry, so I drizzled some date syrup and over it, and this is my cranberry compote, which is just cranberries. I, I harvest them in the fall and then I freeze them, and it's just cranberries with um, some unsweetened apple sauce, cinnamon, and orange zest, or orange slices, and I, I just eat that as like a jam with my cereal on my toast, and it's delicious. Cranberries are excellent. All berries are excellent. Um, and then I sometimes I throw instead of a slice of lemon in my herbal tea, I throw in a slice of orange rind instead of throwing it away. I've been eating these Cara Cara oranges. Has anyone picked those up at you know, Trader Joe's? I shop there a lot, but they're um, they're little oranges and they have pink. They look almost like grapefruit inside, but they're sweet, really delicious. And I think they're just in season for a little while. Um, so I always throw a piece of some kind of citrus rind in my tea. And then this is, this was my Easter lunch. So there's actually a veggie burger. This is my hostess remembered that I was vegetarian. So she made veggie burger for me because everyone else was eating lamb. Um, and then there's a chickpea salad that I made with some vegan feta, which is, you know, yes, it's a processed food, but as a treat from time to time, I get vegan feta. And uh, fresh mint, um, tomatoes, cucumber, red onion. And then this is eggplant with pomegranate, which my lovely hostess made for us, and some potatoes with lemon, and a delicious um, salsa verde. So that was, again, like a very satisfying, super tasty meal. And uh, no lamb for me, but it, you know, it didn't bother me. Everyone else was eating lamb. I was just like, no, thank you. Um, I'll stick with a veggie burger. Um, so here are a couple of myths about plant-based eating, that it's too expensive, that you're not getting enough you know, protein. Um, so as to the expense, I mean, rice and beans and carrots and, and, you know, bananas and, and are not expensive. So, I mean, I guess you, you could, if you wanted to try and do all your shopping at Whole Foods, buy nothing but organic, you know, expensive produce, but there are ways to eat, um, whole food plant-based on a budget. And there are whole, I have a cookbook at home, it's called Vegan on a Budget. So there are definitely ways to eat, um, especially if you buy seasonal food and you can buy frozen vegetables and fruit, there's definitely, definitely ways to eat. And also, you know, meat and dairy and eggs and little cheese, those are much more expensive than beans and rice. And you're saving money at the doctors as well because you don't want to be getting sick. Um, you, you can, all, all plants contain protein. You're getting plenty of protein if you're eating beans and grains and, and vegetables. Um, so that everything in moderation argument doesn't really make sense once you've learned how bad dairy and meat and animal products are for you because my friend Jean has a way of explaining it that you know it's like if you if you if you punch someone in the arm let's say you're eating meat and dairy and this is symbolizing you know, all the bad things you're eating or the things that are bad for your body why would you still want to punch yourself at all you know once you know something's not good for your body to me it just makes sense to cut it out but that's, I mean, I've done a lot of reading. I've done a lot of um, research. I've taken the eCornell um, plant-based nutrition course. I've watched the documentary. So I'm very, very convinced that this is just the best way for, for human health, the best way to eat. So um, I don't even have like the, a treat or, you know, eat something like a piece of cheesecake. I don't even want it anymore because I don't believe that it's going to be doing me any good at all. So... I don't know. It's it's that's just an interesting concept. I mean, my mother used to say that, but really, um, I'm I'm just more all in with the, with the whole food plant based eating. Um, so it's really it's up to you how you want to approach it. Whether you just want to go in gradually, or whether you just want to um, give it a try and see see the health benefits for yourself. Um, I mean, yes, it does require some cooking and meal prep, and it does make it a little harder to eat out. But um, again, you know, for me, the health benefits are worth it because to me, it's it's a form of self respect and self love, if you want to call it that. You know, that I know I want to do the best I can for my body. I think the older we get, our bodies need a little bit more TLC and, and maintenance and care, just like a car. You know, we're not going to run, you know, we can't expect our bodies to kind of run forever if we're abusing them with all sorts of things. You know, I mean, I, you know, throughout my 20s and 30s and most of my 40s, I was eating a lot of, of, of foods that were damaging to me. I was drinking way too much alcohol. I gave that up six years ago. So I think, you know, the more we educate ourselves about 
what is actually good for us and how to fuel our bodies in the best way, um, the more the more you'll just want to eat this way because as you start feeling better and um, you'll just want to get more more invested. I I think and that's what happened to me. But everyone's different, so everyone you know should just take what they what they will from this and you know give it a try. Try a few recipes. Um, the, the other myth is that humans are omnivores. Again, if you watch the game changes, you'll sh they'll show you know like human teeth versus a carnivore's teeth. They show the human gut compared to a carnivore's gut or an omnivore's gut. And um, you know we have very very long intestines, um, which are designed to digest plants. Basically, I'll kind of leave it at that. But go watch um, game changes, and they they go into all of all of it, just like the the, eye, the way our eyes work versus a carnivore. And a herbivore and all these things. So it's kind of it's quite interesting from a from a zoological perspective or from a biological perspective. Um, and why doesn't everyone know about the benefits? Well, I mentioned before, you know, there's a lot of misinformation. There's you know the food industry is very powerful. There are a lot of corporate interests. You know, the the, the supplement industry, the diet industry, they all want us kind of confused because they want us to keep going back. You know, for one, also. Doctors, and there's no, with no malice intended, but doctors don't get a lot of nutrition training. Um, most doctors in the West uh, learn about, um, you know, they train to, to treat diseases, but not to prevent them. So this way of eating is more about prevention in terms of disease, because if you, I mean, if you know, if you eat this way your whole life, you're very, it's very unlikely you're gonna get any of these chronic lifestyle diseases. So doctor, we basically go to the doctor when we have a problem, you know, and they try to treat it. They give you a medication, of course, because that's the easiest. It's easy to write a prescription and they don't have a lot of time. They can't, you know, A, they might not have the knowledge of how important diet is in a lot of these diseases, but also it's, it's just the quickest thing to do is just to write a prescription um, or, you know, surgery or whatever. But um, and in many cases, it's often necessary, but... Um, they won't necessarily know about the power of nutrition in terms of prevention and healing from a lot of these lifestyle diseases. So um, the information has all been out there for decades, um, but you know it's up to us really to take interest, like you today, to take an interest in learning more about it, and also you know taking the making the the, the decision and making the effort to to implement some changes because. Ultimately, it is up to us. You know, there's a lot of personal responsibility, and there are a lot of changes that you can make just by deciding what you put on your fork every day. So that's really what it comes down to. Yes. Yeah, so I mentioned oh, a lot of here, but um, how not to die. These are just resources, uh, books, and documentaries. How not to die. There's one called the Pleasure Trap. Um, your body in balance, Dr. Barnard, the China study, the food revolution is a really interesting one that came out over 20 years ago. John Robbins is actually the son of the um, the Baskin Robbins ice cream <laughs> empire. He was the heir to that empire and he decided to walk away from it because he decided that dairy was not going to be a part of his life. Um, forks over knives, game changes, what the hell, plant pure nation. And then there's a really good series on Netflix that came out this year called, um, I think it's called How to Live to 100, about the blue zones. Have you heard about the blue zones? There are places in the world where people routinely live to 100 oh. and beyond, but in, in, in excellent health, you know, active and, and mentally there. And, and it's a lot to do with diet, but also to do with lifestyle, being active, having a community, you know, staying staying mentally active, you know, playing chess or reading the paper or whatever it is, but that's an interesting one. And then there was another one called um, You Are What You Eat, which was um, um, some, um, an experiment as it were, or, or a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They did a kind of a test with um, twins, over 20 pairs of twins, where they put one on a plant-based on a vegan diet and the others on an omnivore diet. And um, that was kind of interesting. That went a lot into kind of the emotional and cultural uh, forces kind of behind why we eat what we eat and why it's so hard for us to change and all of that. So that was a good one too. And then disease reversal hope, which is um, one that's been shown here and at the senior center the other week, which is a very powerful one um, regarding 
exactly what it says, disease um, prevention and reversal and giving hope to a lot of people, you know, just healing from heart disease, definitely turning diabetes, um, type two diabetes around. Um, so it's powerful, powerful stuff. And there's a lot of great information out there. Oh, and, and I always talk about Plant City. Have any of you been to Plant City in Providence? That in Providence in Oh yeah, that one, the fast food one, like the small one. It's pretty good. But was it just one room? Yes. It's on that main road. Yes. They've they've moved. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had just discovered it last year. So that but that's kind of a I mean they call it their kind of fast food kind of version, but it's all plant plant based. But this this place in Providence is like this huge, it's like a beautiful big building, and it has two restaurants upstairs and a cafe downstairs and a burger place and a sushi place. And they also have kind of a, a presentation room in the basement where they have speakers and food demonstrations and everything there is plant-based. So this is the Mexican um, restaurant and they have uh, pizzas, everything is plant-based. It's a very lovely, uh, as my daughters would say, bougie, like it's a very chic <coughs> kind of place. Um, the upstairs, they have these beautiful, see like the blue, that's a big bar upstairs, these beautiful blue velvet uh, chairs. Anyway, it's a, a great place to go. For a little outing we're actually going with the um did i talk last time about the green nosh group the the plant-based group on the cape we meet once a month for potlucks and we sometimes have speakers and in may we're going to plant city 21st of may we're going to plant city for lunch and um we have a speaker coming from an organization called the plant docks which is a providence-based um group of medical professionals, nutritional experts um, for plant docs. Um, and we have a speaker from them coming. Um, if you would like to follow the group on Facebook, it's called the Green Nosh Group. And there's another one called Plant Based Cape Cod. It's kind of all one group, just two different names. Um, and we meet monthly and we have these great potlucks and you just, it's free, you just bring a dish and you can come and try everyone's food. Yes, sorry, we have to go. But oh, you have to leave? Okay, yeah. that's fine. Uh, that is a great place in Green Nosh, it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> all right, thanks for coming. Thank um, okay, well, I want to focus on this, but basically, this is one of Jean's kind of mantras. If you don't make time for your health now, you'll have to make time for your illness later. That sounds a bit grim, but basically the message is there's a lot you can do about it now, you know, to take your health into your own hands and to help prevent or reverse um, any um, diseases you might you might um, be on the road to or recovering from. Um, and a lot of it is preventable through nutrition. But I, I personally think that's a great message because it really gives you a lot of power to take control of your own health. There we go. There's Colin Campbell, give him the final word. The answer to the American health crisis is the food each of us chooses to put in our mouth each day. It's as simple as that. So that's today's, Do anyone have any questions? How long have you been doing this type of eating? <laughs> Four years. Four years. Four years, yeah. So I started, I literally went plant-based overnight when I saw the Game Changers, the documentary. It was, COVID had just, you know, lockdown had just started and um, I watched the documentary with my daughter and I just looked at her and I said, wow, this is amazing. Why don't we give this a try? And she said, mom, just go for it, you know, do it. I'm a very black and white person. I kind of gave up alcohol overnight six years ago. I just, so I said, okay, fine, I'm just going to do it. And started doing some reading and watching more documentaries. And um, and then I kind of moved more into the whole food plant base because I was eating too much of the vegan processed stuff to begin with because um, there is a lot out there, you know, because plant base is becoming so popular. So, of course, the food industry is latching onto that and providing all this um, processed plant-based vegan food. Um, so then I transitioned more to the kind of whole food plant-based way and cut out the, the oils and the sugars and salt. Um, so yeah, four years, yeah. It's been, it's been fun and I've met lots of wonderful people. So I met um, Dr. Siddhartha, who's our plant-based expert on the Cape. Um, he just wrote a book. He's coming here to the library at the beginning of May. I believe it's the second check the website, but he's coming to talk about his new book. He's incredibly knowledgeable. Um, he does a presentation to go with it. 
and will answer any questions. And then he, you know, he's had a lot of experience with, you know, patients who've had all sorts of diseases and issues. And, you know, some of his patients have gone on to get very involved, like Joanne Irwin, who now, you know, she's been speaking for 16 years and doing all sorts of programs. She started as um, his patient and went from a base because of him, his recommendation. Um, so yeah, I've met a lot of nice people at the Green Nosh group and, um, you know, there's Bread and Roses as a vegan cafe in Hyannis and we've had some of our Thank events you. there. Thank you for coming. So, um, so there is a lot happening on the cave. I mean, it's kind of slow, but the group has definitely grown and, you know, we have these wonderful potlucks and there's a lot of great resources to help you if you decide to kind of start on this road. Um, yeah, but I would definitely recommend a couple of books, a couple of documentaries, and uh, and then you kind of, I got so just sucked into it because I was just so inspired by it. So, do you notice any difference in how you feel or uh, anything? I mean, I, I, I sleep really well. Uh, my digestion is uh, working very well. I have tons of energy. Um, I mean, I was eating, I wasn't eating a terrible diet before, you know, because I was lucky to have a mother who, um, cooked a lot of you know vegetables and fruit with German and ate you know we ate pretty well at home so I was already quite I thought I was quite well educated you know in, in healthy eating and all the rest of it but I was still doing you know a lot of things I shouldn't do but um, I I do feel yeah no I do feel good but I was you know I didn't feel terrible before but I just know now that even the benefits that you don't see, I mean, on the outside, I mean, just my blood work has improved so much, you know, my cholesterol has gone down quite substantially. Um, my blood pressure is low, you know, I, I I exercise, you know, most days as well, and I get plenty of sleep and, you know, so it's not just the food, but the food is a big part of it, which kind of makes sense because, you know, we're putting it into our bodies every day and our, all the, you know, cells and everything is just that, that's what we're giving our body, you know, to fuel and to function with. So it just makes sense. I mean, there are environmental factors as well, obviously, but if you read some of these books, it's quite mind blowing. I mean, it's amazing. Like the science behind it all is, is really inspiring. So any other questions? Go ahead. Well, maybe it's naive. I don't have to do this too much, but um, I think this is a silly question, but it seems like if you're being rice or beans as a base or some sort of a, uh, a grain mm -hmm. and then vegetable. It seems like the same things every day. How do you keep on getting oh, Well, because there's such huge variety. I mean, you know, I know the, there are lots of vegetables out there to try. But, but so if you're not eating like this, what kind of variety are you eating? Well, I, I, I eat a pretty good diet, mm -hmm. actually, but I do like, you know, like a Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. which I think is important. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing, but, you know, and I, I might like the, you know, a York peppermint patty at the end of the day or something sweet, you know, but um, I don't, I guess I don't eat a lot of beans, rice it do, mm. but it seems like I would uh, either, I don't know if I would get bored really quickly. Well, I see, I just, I find that interesting just because I have, since I've eaten, so eating this way, I'm eating a much bigger variety. A thing because I mean, a I've just taken a bigger interest in it, <clears throat> and I understand the variety is so important. But also, I mean, what was I eating before? I mean, toast. I mean, it's not like I was eating twenty different kinds of chicken and yogurt. You know, I'm still eating the same kind of thing, just different. But yeah, now I'm eating other people. That's well. What do you eat for breakfast? Uh, and then they say oatmeal. Oh, Toast, oats. Yeah. Um, I make as far a, as they go. No, you can make a tofu scramble with turmeric and it looks like egg, but on toast with mushrooms and spinach. I mean, there's. I'm not a huge into variety for breakfast because I, you know, I'm, I have to be out in the middle quickly, so I have to take my daughter to school and stuff. But um, if you have, it's about you know time as well as as well as other things. But um, yeah, I mean, you can put different things on your toast, just like a, a non plant eater would do. You know, different things on your toast. Um, you know, oatmeal and granola with different fruit every day. And I mean, a lot of people that I know eat the same thing every day, not mm -hmm. plant-based. I mean, they just yeah. eat the same thing every day. So I mean, as long as you're eating different fruit every day and, uh, you know, you can put different nuts in your oatmeal, different seeds. And, you know, sometimes I have it with yoga, sometimes I have it with a plant milk. Um, so I'm getting, I mean, enough variety for my breakfast. That I'm not, I mean, I never get sick of it because I just like it. But the lunches and the dinners are different combinations of, 
beans and rices and grains. And there's a million recipes that I, you know, have not even explored yet um, because I, I get, you know, into my habits and I make the same things. But um, I try to sort of dip into a recipe book. You know, you can have Mexican, um, you can make Indian food, you can make any ethnic food, like tons of great Asian recipes. Um, so for tacos, you know, instead of the meat, I'll have mushrooms or sweet potato and then just loads of vegetables and, and you know, just a different way of different, diff just different right. ways of filling it. Instead of chicken or fish, you just use, you know, a different vegetables. So, yes. What I noticed too, I've come to a couple of your talks, is I really like to hear about how you're spicing with the mm -hmm. foods. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even use that many spices. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in, you know, the combinations that you use mm -hmm. or experimenting mm -hmm. with that so that it's tasty. Right. I would never have done this without having spices. Yeah, it has to taste perfect. good. I mean, I can't yeah. eat bland. You know, I've always yeah. been kind of a foodie. I love food, I love eating. And, but I like flavor, so I yeah. can't eat just beans on their own or just right, you know, I, I just can't. If someone said, this is what you have to eat every day, oh. no, yeah. I love, you know, spicy, I like herb, fresh herbs, yeah. condiments, yeah. you know, sauces. So yeah, that's that's really important. Like the sauces, like the dressing with tahini and lemon and maple syrup and like the peanut sauce with garlic and ginger. I mean, I love strong flavors. Um, but nature kind of has it all, you know, with the, yeah. the herbs like mint and basil and coriander and some cilantro and chilies. And so there is, um, yeah, there, I mean, there's a huge variety and I haven't even scratched the surface. All those green vegetables, I haven't eaten half of them. You know, there's a lot of different greens there, like beets are wonderful and um, just the more colorful and the more variety, the better. But it really, it's impossible for it to get boring if you really kind of explore the variety that's out there, you know. I, I mean, it's not the variety, maybe sometimes, but you're right, spicing. The flavor, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, you know, and if you're, I mean, I, I don't know, again, I kind of learned from my mom a little bit, but I just kind of throw a lot of stuff together just intuitively. But if you're not, um, if you don't, if you haven't cooked a lot, you know, there are just, a, you know, millions of recipes out there to help you. And just sometimes just a simple addition of some lime juice, mm -hmm. You know, and some chili pepper. I mean, lime and citrus is really important when you're eating your greens. So put a little drop of lemon juice or lime juice because somehow the um, the acidity helps with the absorption of the vitamins like vitamin K or A, whatever it's in the green vegetable. So always remember to put a little squeeze of lime or lemon. And I put lime and lemon in all my stews and chilies and everything. But I love citrus. I like the flavor of citrus. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Talk about vitamin D12. Yes. Is there a recommended amount? Probably. Um, so I buy I buy a little liquid one, a little a little spray. It's a vegan, you know, because you wouldn't believe what they put in some of these supplements and some kind of animal ingredient. So I get a vegan um, natural spray. If you look up B12, I can get it on Amazon. B12 vegan spray, and I just do like a couple little squirts a day, and that's plenty. Um, and then you can get it from the nutritional yeast as well, yeah. if you're adding that into your cooking. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, I just say one little capsule a day. So yeah, it's um, it's been a, it's been just an interesting path, just kind of just learning to cook, and just trying to include as many great nutrients every day as possible. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. I've done well starting, and I've dropped oh, the cholesterol level. Oh, good! Over fifty points. Wow! Yeah. Wow. And over how much time? Uh, about a year. Oh, that's fantastic! Oh, yeah. But I have a problem with yeah. sugar. Okay. Uh, I have a terrible sweet tooth, okay. and I eat dates, and they don't satisfy me. Oh, much. really? Okay. I want it. Piece of cake. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sugar. Um, sugar is a, is very addictive, and you know it's in everything. I mean, it's added to a lot of foods that people yeah. you know gen buy and don't even think the sugar would be in it, like bread and well, obviously cereals are sugar loaded. But um, <laughs> so how did I do? I mean, I eat a lot of fruit, berries. And I know, I know it's a different kind of sugar from like, you know, I used to eat, when my kids used to eat candy, I always took a handful of, you know, sour patch. Well, I used to eat all of this stuff until, you know, four years ago. Um, I, I don't know. I think, I think it's partly a psychological thing where I've just talked myself out of it. And if you stop eating it for, you know, a couple of months, you, you do, the cravings do go away. 
I still eat a little bit of very, very dark chocolate, which is bitter. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not sweet, but it kind of gives you that same kind of and little bit. I'm not a chocolate person. Oh, okay. I go for the vanilla. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can buy, you know, vegan ice creams, and I was eating those in the first year, but they're loaded with sugar and oil. So, you know, they're fine for the occasional three, but it's really, you know, I mean, I'm I'm bad with portion control. So if I open a thing of ice cream and no one else in my house is going to eat, you know, oat and ice cream, I just kind of sit and I go through it. So I've stopped buying that just to not have the temptation in the house because right. I'm not good at just having one or two little scoops. Um, I've even wondered because my grandson came down and I found I indulged in some of this candy uh -huh. and now it's like... I woke up this morning and it was like I was looking to see if there was oh, any I left. I know it's hard you know and I have a 16 year old daughter who is she's like a bean pole she's so slender I mean she eats pasta and ice cream and all this stuff so she had you know I buy yeah. and I, I mean I she eats a lot of fruit and you know veg and, and, and you know I'm trying to get her to switch to the whole wheat pasta she doesn't like it but she'll have you know I'll buy her cookies or she'll buy candy whatever and it's sitting around the house and I just tell myself that it's just it's like with the alcohol I'm just like no I've cut that out I'm not even going to have a little bit because then I would if I had a little bit I would probably want more so then I go I go hit my dates and my dark chocolate and my berries and then I feel really good about myself <laughs> <laughs> yes um because you know honestly I mean also I've been through a, a cancer kind of scare I will call it um, and it was two years after or a year after I'd gone plant-based and my you know doctor said that I had probably slowed down the spread of it by the way I was yeah, and from cutting out alcohol because there are actually links between alcohol and breast cancer which I didn't know about which I do now uh, so that's probably what it was in my case but anyway um sugar is, is terrible for cancer like cancer feeds on sugar so that's that was like my sign to kind of just cut it out completely um because I, I I don't want it I don't want it coming back and I definitely don't want to go through the whole hamster wheel of the whole, all the doctors and the specialists and all that I'm done with that Right. So I am doing everything I can. I'm like even more motivated, you know, than before to eat this way because I, I feel like it's really, you know, it's going to prevent recurrence. It's, it's so powerful. Just the leafy greens, the soy, the, the green tea is a good one as well for women. Um, so yeah, sugar is is um, just something I just try to avoid. But it, it the cravings do go away. I mean, I don't even want to eat like junky candy anymore. I mean, the, at Easter, the hostess had made this unbelievable carrot cake. And of course, it was loaded with, you know, cream cheese frosting and loads of sugar and butter and stuff. So I had, I cut a slice and I kind of tried to scrape the frosting off and I, because I just wanted to try the carrot, the actual cake. Yeah. And it was, it was good. But but it tastes so sweet to me. Like it's almost off-puttingly sweet. And that's too much mm. because I'm just not used to eating that kind of sugar. Mm. Um, so, you know, mango, papaya, I love grapes and berries mm. and melon and apples and all that stuff so just try and just try and load up on the fruit and then you've always got a healthy alternative you know dates are tricky for me as well because you know they come in these big boxes yeah. and no one else in my house eats them so you know i have to kind of, i have to um, limit myself to you know a couple of day. but they're good for you I mean, it's fiber and it's, it's all natural sugars but it's still sugar and it still comes down to calories at the end of the day if you're trying to you know lose weight it comes down to Calories in and calories out, but there, but not every calorie is created equal, and it's much better to get your calories from these kinds of foods. Yes, I was just going to say um, at the senior center, I saw that event recently, and Joanne brought a mousse. I don't know what it was made of. Yes, but tofu made delicious. Made, yeah, chocolate mousse. Yeah, yeah. And then tofu. she brought um, um, brownies. I think they were made maybe with sweet potato. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, yeah, yeah. But they were delicious. Yeah, yeah. but then but probably not very it's sweet, like right? Like but just nice texture. Right. Right. So yeah, you could make brownies with black beans yeah. and sweet potatoes, and you and it's. Yeah. I know as well. That was what I thought the first time someone told me that, but it's they're delicious yeah. because cocoa powder is unsweetened, so, but it's strong in flavor. Trust me. And the texture is nice. They're very kind of mushy and velvety. Yes. Yeah. Fudgy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I know. I should next time I maybe I'll make a dessert. Um, did everyone try the black beans? They're tasty. Yeah. Yeah. I never I never get sick of those. Oh, so I threw in I there's a recipe here, but I added some extras. I added um turmeric and cumin. 
which are kind of Eastern, kind of, and they're very, very good. Um, these turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. It's been used in medicine for thousands of years. Um, there's chili, there's a little, um, you know, apple cider vinegar, Dijon mustard. It's got there's quite a list of tomato paste in there. So there's quite a lot of different flavors that all kind of blend together. And the liquid smoke, that's what gives it that smoky flavor. When you um, saute your vegetables, mm. you do it blind? Yeah, just, I mean, things like mushrooms and onions kind of generate their own kind of moisture somehow. But yeah, I'll add quick little vegetable stock. Oh. Much easier cleanup because, you know, without the oil, it's not as greasy and, you know, messy. But um, yeah, I just vegetable stock. And again, yes. When you have toast, what do you put on? Uh, hummus. Okay. Um, a little um, almond butter. So there's a Trader Joe's making almond butter. The only ingredient is almonds. There's no salt, there's no nothing added. So that's just, it's called raw almond butter. Thin, because yeah. that's, I mean, that's kind of rich. Um, so almond butter, you can just put avocado on your toast. I put my um, cranberry compote. Uh, again, I just don't even think about butter anymore. I just put the topping right on the toast instead of, I used to put a layer of butter under everything. I just, just don't do that anymore. What brand? Well, there's the only well the, the only brand that's kind of easy to find here that is compliant is a brand called Ezekiel Bread, oh, yeah. which they have at Trader Joe's and they have it in a lot of the bigger supermarkets, often in the freezer section. Uh, it, it's not great. I mean, it's kind of a little sawdusty so, so and it's a little too dry for my. I mean, I you know I'm originally German and I've been so I lived in Germany for eight years. And I ate German bread. So it's hard to kind of compare to that, but it's it's fine. I mean, it's, you know, again, it kind of depends what you put on it. You can put, you know, avocado, hummus, um, you can load it with, you know, like cucumbers and tomatoes and onions and all those things for lunch. Um, but there's also another brand, I think I talked about last time called When Pigs Fly. It's from a bakery in Maine. And um, I used to go to Whole Foods for it. And now it's started popping up everywhere, including Market Basket and Stop and Shop. And they used to make a cinnamon raisin one, and the only ingredients were, you know, wheat, whole wheat flour, I think, you know, cinnamon's raisins, and molasses. Those are the only ingredients. Um, so again, you know, just check the ingredient label. I mean, Dave's Killer Bread is popular, but it has a lot of ingredients. I mean, a lot of it's seeds and all of that, but my husband likes that, so I buy that for him sometimes. Um, but I, my favorite is when pigs fly. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and they make muffins and different products. It's not just toast, no sliced slot toast bread. But um, yeah. Does anyone here make their own bread? Ooh, you make sourdough. It's the one yeah. that you have the starter, and then it just lasts forever. Oh, oh, but it's a two-day process. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yes. yes. Yeah, I love sourdough. Sourdough is oh. very good for you. Um, so who here is already partially plant-based? What time is it going to work? I've got a 220 already. <coughs> Talking great <laughs> forever. Yeah. You're partially plant-based or mostly plant-based? Mostly. mostly. That's great. Have you, how long have you been doing it? Year and a half. Oh, have you had blood work done since you started eating this way? My numbers can't get back. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, That's amazing. I'll be dead for an hour before my blood. <laughs> <laughs> No, but that's great. So cholesterol's come down. Was it high, or was it, it was just going to borderline? Yeah, like mine. Mine was kind of just getting up there. But... Mine went from one twenty-five to sixty-two. Wow. And I eat fish. I eat chicken. Okay. Um, I eat pork kind of wine. Mm -hmm. But mostly plant-based. All right. Okay. Yeah. See, so you don't have to do it one hundred percent to get you know a lot of the benefits. Yes. I just started trying to transition just a couple of weeks ago. Mm. And um, it was kind of shocking to me when I went to my refrigerator, it was totally filled with milk and dairy. Mm -hmm. Everything was cheese, sour cream, mm -hmm. cottage mm -hmm. cheese, mm -hmm. yogurt, mm -hmm. milk. 
half and half. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been trying to get rid of that. That was my first step. Yeah, or you know, replace it with and I have a non dairy yeah. version. Yeah, yeah. So it's been kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you'll see the more you kind of get into it, the more your fridge. I mean, my fridge is kind of full of you know bags of kale and spinach yeah. and yeah. stuff yeah. that I've prepared. You know, in little containers and then there's a. I mean, my husband still yeah. eats all yogurt. So on the top shelf, there's his little yogurt yeah. and my yeah. kite hill. You know, dairy free. Um, just putting on baked potatoes or something. But yeah, no, I love looking at the pictures. So I follow a lot of these you know, plant based things on Instagram and they post mm -hmm. the pictures of their fridges and they yeah. just look amazing. It just looks like a rainbow of produce. Yeah. You know, so I'm not quite there yet, but I'm trying. Um, and then my freezer's full of cranberries and soups and things that I made, you know. So that's a maple syrup. Maple syrup. Well, my daughter lives in Canada. Um, I mean, she doesn't live there, she's studying in Canada. So when I went there last time, they had actually maple syrup in cans. And my husband looking at me said, I'm not, he said, it looks like dog food. I said, it's maple syrup, I don't care what we you know, it was so reasonable. So I bought like four, four of those home. So I'm going back up in May, I've told her to start looking out for the a special offer of maple syrup. Yeah, and there's um, there's a company called Plant Strong by Brett Esselstyn, he's the son of the cardiologist. Um, Dr. Esselstyn, who comes up in all the documentaries, and he's he started this company called Plant Strong, and he makes a pancake mix, which is all sort of ancient grains and whole grains and oats and dates and whatever. It's wonderful. So I make that. I've been blessed, you know, by the whole food plant based people and the little maple syrup and blueberries. And so that's my weekend treat. We do a lot of research too, like all and things like Wow, things like with almond milk and stuff, and it's like. And it's filling, right? I mean, people think I just eat salad and, and, and granola, but I mean, I eat a lot of food every day. And I mean, I'm not wasting away, clearly, you know. So, um, yeah, no, I, I love food and I just have fun with it. You know, do you eat three meals a day or do you lunch all your love? I'm trying to do three meals a day. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I snack when I, if I'm preparing food, you know, I'll kind of test stuff. And if I'm really hungry, if I've been to the gym in the morning and I can't quite wait till lunch, I'll have an, I'm trying to just do fruit for snacks, you know, rather than date and nuts. And, so just I'll have an apple or a banana or something just in between. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't do fasting or any, I don't like feeling like being really hungry. I, I like, I'm always thinking about the next meal. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so quick question. Um, if any of you are planning on coming to another talk, what would you like to hear about next? Um, Amy thought that it would be nice to talk about, um, since summer is on the way, um, you know, barbecues, you know, out, you know, entertaining over the summer, how to kind of introduce some more plant-based foods to your summer cooking, barbecue. So we've kind of done that for the next talk, but um, is there anything else you would like me to focus on for a future tour. I find out I'm gravitating towards Indian vegetarian food. Ooh, because I'm it's teaching me how to use the spices. Mm. So that uh, mm. yeah. So I, I mean it would be nice to be able to do a food demo, but we don't really have a kitchen here that I can use. Um because Dr. Sid obviously you know he's Indian and he um I'm sure he could come and do a nice food demo for us. Um, there are two Indian restaurants that I, oh, there's one in Falmouth as well, but there's two that I kind of go to from time to time. Do you go to the Indian Pavilion on Main Street? No, I've gone to one in Plymouth that I oh. really like. Oh, yeah. nice. And there's a fairly new one in um, Yarmouth called Kashar. Has anyone been there? No, I completely not. Okay, it's, it's on Route 28, and it's a slightly, um, it's not the greatest, um, interior if you will it's in a hotel a kind of uh i don't know i forget the, the, the chain but it's a you know chain hotel and the owners are indian and they've allowed these this, these young people who've started this restaurant to use kind of the hotel lobby it's like in the back of the hotel so it's not like a cute restaurant environment or atmosphere but the food is really good and they will cook um you know there's a couple of vegan <clears throat> plant-based yeah. options on the menu and then there's one bread that they make without butter and oil and it's called roti oh, yeah. like a whole wheat like a thin like a thin naan bread mm -hmm. um, but yeah that's definitely something you can cook at home and there are wonderful vegan indian recipe books mm -hmm. 
Right. That's but it. you can only just look it up on the news. But, but um, what is the name of the one in Vienna? Kesha, K E S H A R. Okay. Kesha. Very good. It's really, it's really good. Delicious food. So my husband walks in and says, oh my God, where, what are we doing here? You know, why are you sitting in this lobby? And I said, just wait till the food comes in. I was very happy with that. Okay. So, yeah. so I mean, Indian food. Um, I mean, do you want to learn more about kind of the like disease prevention and reversal, or is that too kind of technical and sciencey? I mean, usually when I ask this question, people just want to hear more about the food and like what they can eat every day. Like, what can I have for breakfast every day? What can I make for lunch? You know, how does it all get boring? Or, you know. You know, the, the movie that was shown um, at the senior center, what it, it was amazing. It was testimonials to people mm -hmm. who had reversed mm -hmm. certain um, medical conditions. Mm -hmm. But I, I couldn't relate to any of it. I don't have heart disease or diabetes. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, and, and, they, and yeah, but I'm this way you won't yeah, get any of those yeah. things. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, for me, I wouldn't focus on disease, okay. um, curing disease. Okay. I guess my focus would be on prevention. You're right. Like I want, right. I want to get healthy so that that doesn't happen. To right. Me. Well, that's amazing because you're ahead of the, you know, you're ahead of the game. Yeah. You so know, I because but unfortunately, a lot of people turn to this way of eating when they have had a health scare yeah. to help heal and reverse. But it's much better if you can start doing it before. Oh, yeah, okay. and he's a bit strange in the hospital right now. I mean, he can almost die. He's diabetic. He has the use of ten percent of his heart, oh, okay. digestive heart failure, really. and I know it's all about food. Mm -hmm. And it was really that's what made me decide oh, oh, I have to get oh, serious because I am Wow. Okay. Because I, I mean, yeah, I do love. Yeah. Uh, Thank but you. I don't want to get Thank sick you. and leave. Right. Well, good for you. I'm glad yeah. you turned the corner. You know, before before you had a health scare. Yes. So if you have another class, I'm just beginning mm -hmm. this. Journey. Did your husband do this? Um, eighty percent, eighty percent. I mean, he had some lamb at Easter, but he cooks what I cook, so I don't cook meat at home anymore. If he wants meat, he has to go find it somewhere else. He does. Okay. So if we go out to eat, he might have some fish or seafood or something. something like but that. I only cook like this at home, and he loves it all. I mean, he's really. He said, "Oh, you know, it's more better, it's more it. tastier." Yeah, he's getting into it, and he's lost weight. He feels better. His blood works better. So. He's kind of on board with it, yeah. but he hasn't read the books and watched and the movies like and all this. that stuff. But but he eats whatever I make. Interesting. So that's Thank good. You. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks.